class, welcome to Advantage. My name is Matt Fisher, I'm your accounting professor. In this lecture, we're going over activity-based costing. In a previous lecture, we went over the predetermined overhead rate. And this, this video is gonna take that a, a step further, right? Remember, the, re the predetermined overhead rate was when we calculated one single rate to be used to allocate overhead into work in process. This is at a manufacturing plant. And in our example, we had estimated overhead of $500,000, and we divided that by an estimated activity base or allocation amount of 10,000 direct labor hours. So that got us a rate of $50. Now this is fine if we have just one product. We only manufacture one product in our plant, then a, a single overhead rate, sometimes we call this the plant-wide overhead rate or the traditional rate, is fine. But if we manufacture multiple products, we might not be allocating overhead properly between those different items that we're manufacturing because it's possible that direct labor hours isn't the best way to allocate all of these overhead costs. That's why we might use activity-based costing. In activity-based costing, I'm gonna erase this right here. In activity-based costing, we're gonna take this $500,000 and we're gonna divide it into different activities that take place in the plant. So I'm assuming that we have four different activities. So we have inspecting, we have setups that take place, we have machining, and we have uh, supervision. And the costs associated, the overhead costs associated with each one of these activities is as follows. $50,000, so all these are dollars. $50,000, setups is also $50,000. Machining is $150,000 and the supervision is $250,000. So if you add these up, you can see that that adds up to the 500,000. So that's what we're doing here. We're taking the 500,000 and we're dividing it up into different activities that take place. And then we're, we're putting those overhead costs into each one of those areas where they are in, incurred, okay? Or incur, incurring. Next, what we want to do is we want to divide this by an activity. So we're using the same formula as before. We're taking the overhead cost divided by some sort of activity. Well, for inspections, the activity is number of inspections. So I'm going to divide this by 10,000 inspections, which gets me $5 per inspection. So there's my rate for inspections. Now the next one is setups. And let's say that there are 1,000 setups. So now I divide the 50,000 by the 1,000 setups and that gets me $50 per setup. Next, I'm gonna take the machining and this is being allocated based off of machine hours. So I'm gonna divide this by 5,000 Going to abbreviate machine hours, which gives me, in this case, uh, $30 per machine hour. And then the last one is supervision, and we're going to allocate this based off of direct labor hours. So I'm going to abbreviate that DLH, direct labor hours. So 250,000 divided by 10,000 direct labor hours gets us. $25 per direct labor hour. So now instead of having just one rate, as we did previously, we now have four rates in order to allocate our overhead. So it's the same thing. It's just instead of one, we now have four. So now we have to go back to our job that we're working on and find out, well, how many inspections did we have? How many setups? How many machine hours? And how much, how many direct labor hours did we have? And then once we have that, then we can allocate that overhead 
into this job. Okay, so let me just back up for a second. All these, all these numbers here, the dollar amounts and the numbers for inspection setups, uh, machining hours and direct labor hours would need to be given to you. You wouldn't just know these numbers. So if you're doing a homework problem or a test problem, this would have to be given to you. Then you could calculate this part. All right. Now, how we allocate the overhead to the jobs, once again, these numbers would need to be given to you. So let's assume that we have 30 setups. All right. So five times 30 for this job. Let's say this is job 101. In job 101, there were 30 inspections. So we're going to allocate $150 of overhead into that job. Let's say that in this job, there were four setups. So four times 50 here gives me 200. So five times 30, 150, 50 times four, 200. In the machining area, we had 20 machine hours that we used in order to manufacture our product. So 30 times, $30 times 20 machine hours gets us $600. And then lastly, uh, they're giving us for this job 101, 50 direct labor hours. So 50 direct labor hours times 25 direct labor hours gets us $1,250 uh, worth of overhead associated with this activity. So now we can add up these four numbers and that gets us a total of $2,200. And this is what needs to go into our work in process for this job 101. So what we would do, the journal entry, would be to debit work in process 2200 and credit the overhead count 2200 because we're allocating, we're taking the costs out of overhead and allocating them into work in process. So that would be our journal entry to move these costs into work in process, all right? Well, class, I hope this has helped. You may need to go back to a previous predetermined overhead rate video just to get refreshed and make sure you understand why we're calculating these overhead rates. But in this example here, you can see that we're doing this because we're, we're being more specific. We're saying certain overhead costs are driven by different things like inspections, setups, manufacturing, uh, machining hours, and direct labor hours. So we're, we're being more careful here and making sure that we're allocating the costs on how they truly are being driven so that our jobs are getting the, a more correct amount of overhead in them. All right, I hope to see you soon. I hope you enjoyed these videos. Good luck.